So we have the critter source right now, but before we can actually build the critter, we need to download and install a bunch of dependencies and libraries. While Krita can do a lot of stuff, it actually borrows a lot of code from a lot of other projects to help it with a lot of things like doing all of the user interface and how it sends events and a lot of other features like some of the filters. So to get all of these other external projects and libraries, we're going to have to install all those. Thankfully, that's going to actually be a pretty easy step for the most part. So we're going to open up our terminal over here. And we can just, we're just right at our home location, which we can just stay there. I actually have a document that has everything we need to install. So this pretty much says we want to install things and these are all the things we're going to install. So we can just copy and paste this, copy and paste it here and then put in our password and then it's going to install everything. Now I actually installed everything just a little bit ago so it says everything's already up to date but this will probably take about five minutes to finish installing everything so yeah that's pretty much all of the the the, the base part of it now that's the second part is there's another application that's part of Krita that's also a dependency called gimmick which does a lot of the filters for that we're gonna do this other command with installing things and then we'll just kind of do the same thing. This the sudo a, a, this one you notice it says apt get, which is a bit different than apt is, which what what we used up here. Uh, before I recorded this, I actually tried installing these things. Uh, oops, did it get everything? Yeah, I tried installing everything. using the other the other method and I was actually getting oh, something's weird I was actually getting some problems <clears throat> uh, I think it's I think it added a period or a return key let me try this I actually have it <clears throat> installed already but uh copy there we go. And uh, there are some, if, if you don't run this here, it's possible you're going to get this bug here. So whenever you run, a, if you would start running, I think this command would run okay, but when you run this command here, you're gonna, there's a chance you're gonna get this, this error that says, Qt5 linguist tools config and that has to do with one of the dependencies the I think the version is different with it so it, it can't find it and it's just having problems finding it so uh, for some for whatever reason uh, installing it like this seemed to help to help with it so after I did that that kind of helped with it uh, now before we run this the next thing maybe we can go over real quick is vari variables. So we have this variable here, it's called build root. Uh, so we can add these in uh, to the command line. Uh, so if we, did, if we would just type build root equals tilde crit uh, you hit enter, it doesn't look like it does anything, but now you can actually reference variables by doing just that. And now when you hit enter, you can see that 
this is going to ma map to my home directory slash krita. So if I reference it here with things like this, or if I reference it in other steps when I'm building krita, uh, it'll know that that's what this is. One important point about these variables is that they're only available during the session. So while you see I just typed that in here, say for example I just restarted my computer and then I tried to run, I, I would try to use this again. You'll notice it's not actually, it doesn't, it doesn't know what to do with that because it, it's only active during this thing. So you're going to have to do it again every time you start up one of these sessions. So now that we kind of went over the environment variables a little bit, we can, uh, before we run this, we actually need to be in uh, a new folder. We're actually going to create a couple new folders for it. We're going to create a D folder for downloading, and then we're going to create a B folder, a B folder for where it builds. So we can just do a new folder here, B. Make another folder here called D, and then now we'll go into Krita and then we will go into the B folder. And then now we can run this command. So what this is going to pretty much do is it's going to add all of these build configuration options in this folder. And then this thing is just saying, hey, the source code for all of this stuff is if you go up a directory and then in the source folder, and then there's some variables and settings to configure it. There, so that's, so all of the build files have been written, but it actually hasn't been built yet, so we'll do that next. But if, if we go into this B folder, you can see it's created all of this stuff in here. Uh, it creates a lot of this other stuff in areas, but the only thing we're gonna really care about is this ext gimmick. So now that it's built, files have been written successfully, we can actually build it, which it, it'll compile it and it'll make it so we can use it when we eventually do Krita. So I just pasted that in there. Uh, and I'll again, I'll put all of these commands in the description so you don't have to try to pause it and remember it and retype it. So it just downloads gimmick, sets it up, it looks, make sure it has everything, and now it's just build, building it out. So this doesn't usually take too long to do. I can fast forward it a bit when it's done and then we can continue. And we're done. That probably took about five minutes to actually build it from scratch. So we are still in the build folder. So. But we need we are now ready to actually build Krita and start working with it. Um, so to do that, we're gonna go back a directory. We're gonna switch to our build directory. And uh, we are going to run this, which what this will do is kind of configure everything and make sure we can build everything. So there's a lot of stuff it does up at front, but a lot of the dependency stuff we did earlier is to kind of make sure this is gonna work. So you see like found all of this, all of these PyQt's and LCMS's and FFTW's. Now if we didn't do all the dependency stuff before, there would be some errors in here and it would not let us build Krita. So it looks like it's it's done, it's generating done. Uh, there are some packages that aren't found, but none of these are really super necessary uh, to work, so we can just not worry about these. 
Now when we actually build Crito, we can actually use multiple CPUs. Uh, if you're not sure how many processors you have right now, there's a command called lscpu and what that does is it kind of outputs some of your system information. So you can see on this one I have four. So when we build I can actually not use four but I can actually use eight because when we build each CPU can have, have two threads on it. So four times two is eight. So to actually build it and make sure yeah we're in we're in the build folder you could do make install j8 and j stands for jobs so you just do that click enter and you're going to notice it goes really fast on my computer i've actually built this out uh, a little bit earlier just so we can kind of go quicker but actually building it from scratch if you haven't done it before, it, it'll probably take anywhere between 20 minutes to maybe, I mean, I, I could take over an hour depending on how many uh, processors you have and how, how strong your computer is. Uh, so, so it should be to this point after that amount of time. Uh, at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, well, how do I uh, run Krita? So I guess, I mean, one common way some people think is they would just type Krita which this is actually not right because what if you just type crita like this it's actually looking for an installed package uh, from ubuntu which we do not want we want to use the one we just built from source code so we have to access that a little bit differently so we're in the build folder now we're going to go up one and then we're going to go to our install folder and then we're going to change to our bin folder. And then we can see that there's these different files. Now to actually run this file, we have to do dot forward slash. And that helps the command line know that, hey, we want to run something in this folder. We don't just want to run Krita as an Ubuntu package. So make sure you do that dot forward slash when you run it. So now when you do this dot forward slash, it finds it, it knows where it's at, it launches, and looks like it loads, and yeah, looks, looks like it works pretty well.